Hi, my name is Boris and in this video I'm going to show you the amazing updates to the raw distortion effect in Ableton 12.2. We have a brand new delay routing mode, a new filter type called dispersion, and they've even added audio sidechain and controlling feedback with external MIDI. All of these features make raw really, really powerful. Before we get into the video, if you like what we are doing on this channel, make sure to subscribe. We've got more content about Ableton Live coming up. If you'd like to learn Ableton 12 with all the foundations of music production, check out our Beginner to Advanced Live 12 Start to Finish course, and make sure to also check out the Everything Bundle Collector's Edition, which includes all of the courses, sound packs, and project files in our store. To see all of that, check out the video description. All right, so let's jump into the video. I'm just getting started with this really simple pattern and wavetable. Basically, I just have a bunch of effects, EQ and reverb, really simple. And I'm disabling Roar for now. And I'm just automating this frequency knob. You can see over here, focusing in on this part. So I just wanted to show you and the feedback mode in Roar. I know that this is one of the functions that was present from the beginning in Roar, but this is an amazing feature and this is going to be useful for today's updates as well. So basically, we can choose the feedback mode over here, and this basically creates delays which are fed back into Roar, and you can get these infinite feedback loops and basically make your sounds even grittier than with just using distortion. So this is what it sounds like with feedback. I hope you can hear all those resonances that were added here. And we can go really crazy here. Yeah, and now it's an infinite feedback loop. So you really need to control the amount and the feedback time over here as well. So using that, uh, we can take a look at a drum pattern. Here we just have quite a simple pattern just written in a drum rack. I've made this one just with operator, so all of these sounds come from operator. So let's just play this dry. I'm not gonna play the entire pattern for now, but now we can take a look at this processed loop, which is the same exact MIDI pattern. And on each of these sounds, I just put Roar with different settings. So let's give it a quick listen. Maybe let's listen to the second part and then we'll go through all of the editing that I made here. Let's take a look at the kick first of all. So this is our Roar device. We have an envelope follower, which is linked to the filter frequency. So as you can see, we're opening up the filter. This is what it would sound like without controlling. And that's because we have feedback going on. We're just controlling the amount of harmonics with the envelope follower, but these are not new functions. Then we have a snare, which has the new delay mode here. So as you can see, if we switch from classic mode, so just one stage to delay mode, we get the direct tab and the delayed tab. So in the direct tab, you can just basically distort the sound, acts the same as single mode, but then if we add delayed, this is the feedback and we can control the feedback independently over here. And the blend of these is adjusted over here. So that's pretty much the delay routing mode in a nutshell. We have a clap, which is also in delay mode and we have it synced to 16th notes, just creating a bit of a delay, just with a high pass as well on the delay itself, Really nice creative effect. On the hat, similar deal, only that we're using the low pass. Similar thing actually on this sweep snare. We have a higher amount, so it sounds really nice and dubby, especially when we play this somewhere in an offbeat position, sort of. Sounds a bit like an analog delay. We also have some delay applied onto the toms. So we are in the feedback mode. So let's just quickly discuss the difference between the feedback mode and the delay mode. So let's take this clap for instance. So in the direct tab in feedback mode, we can just distort the sound 
But now if we increase the uh, amount of feedback, we can get these delayed feedback hits. And the feedback section basically can distort the feedback loop even further. And then uh, it basically can create these infinite loops. The difference between this and the delay mode, we get very simple distortion in the direct tab once again. But then it creates slapbacks. So it just creates a single delay, which you can access in the delayed section. And then when we add more feedback, it loops on itself in this delayed section only. So we could have a dry uh, sort of signal over here and a really distorted feedback loop over here. So that would be the difference. Basically here we are creating a single slapback which has uh, a feedback loop on it. And in feedback mode, just when the amount is down, mm, there is no delay. We just have to increase it. And as far as I understand, the feedback loop is around both of these tabs, whereas in delay is just around this delayed tab. So feel free to experiment with this. And if you have much more insight about the differences between these two modes, feel free to leave them in the comments. All right, so the next thing I wanna take a look at is the brand new dispersion filter. So we just have a simple saw wave bass sound. Let's just play it. The cool thing about dispersion is that it's a kind of fundamental technique in creating side trance bass sounds. So dispersion is a type of filter and you can access it over here, uh, which doesn't uh, really take any of your frequencies, but it just messes with the phasing and sort of inverts the phasing in different points. It's best to just hear the difference. So here's once again, this dry sound. And now with dispersion. So I hope you can hear this digitally sort of metallic-y, liquidy sort of effect. So this is incredible for bass lines. If we take the dry wet knob, we can blend this in and just create incredible timbres. This is a really great sound design tool. Now moving on to the last update for today, we have this sort of tab which you can expand. We have external sidechain, which basically allows you to feed an external signal into this envelope follower section, which you can then use to modulate different parameters. And we also have MIDI control over the feedback node. So first of all, we have a simple DS kick, so just a, a drum synth kick drum. Here's what it sounds like. Really simple. We have an audio effect rack with two chains. So this chain is just a simple single chain roar. And here we have some feedback going on. So here's without the side chain and MIDI to feedback node. So as you can hear, we've got a bit of feedback. We're just keeping it quite subtle. So here's what I'm doing. So instead of processing the entire kick, I have it set to an external side chain. I'm just choosing the second chain here inside this very audio effect rack, just to get a bit more control over the gain. And this can also be used in many different ways. You could take an absolutely different rhythm. You would basically get that instead of your kick drum as your envelope follower. And, and for example, if we took uh, this wavetable, it would sound like this if we play it. You can see that the envelope follower follows this wavetable. And if we, for instance, assign this to the distortion, we can get So you get the idea. You can basically take an external signal and modulate parameters in RAW accordingly to the gain of that. But let's go back to our settings. And so what we have here is just an external sidechain and the biggest star of the new updates in RAW, I think is this MIDI to feedback note section where basically I have a simple line, simple sort of ARP written out on this blank MIDI track. And I'm just taking that MIDI and selecting it over here. Now I can re-pitch the feedback in this ROAR device according to these MIDI notes. So here's what this sounds like. So 
So we could even take a compressor to just further do side chaining. As you can see, we also have a new look in compressor. You could also choose the second uh, chain here in this audio effect rack. And now if we take different MIDI notes, you can hear that it responds to this MIDI that we're feeding. Let's try to mix in this weird sort of bass line with our kick drum. You can mess around with just basically re-pitching the feedback in many, many different ways. So this is just a starting point for you to explore. All right, I hope you found some of these updates useful. Make sure to check out our Music Production Academy with start to finish courses on making tracks in various genres. And if you'd like to learn Ableton 12 with all the foundations of music production, check out the Beginner to Advanced Live 12 start to finish course. Make sure to also check out the Everything Bundle Collector's Edition, which includes all of the courses, sound packs and project files in our store. To see all of that, check out the video description. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like and write us a comment, and I will see you in the next videos.